It used to be that I'd hold your hand and help you feel better and it'll be okay in a few days. Now I'm just telling you, get over it. We don't have time to play with that anymore. We have so much work to do that's very relevant and very important to the, not only our lives, but the lives of others and for the whole creation. We do not have time to worry about, oh, I can't do enough my coffee. If coffee's a problem for you, get rid of it. It isn't a problem for everyone. Everybody is unique. Uh, but I will say that among our Morning Star family uh, uh, people, I've noticed that uh, we have two things that are really, really important. Yeah, there's a sugar thing going on. But bigger than that is cow's milk and wheat. Long time ago, before this wonderful man passed his spirit, Grandfather Wallace Black Oak, he said, cow's milk is poison to my people. And he said it in a way as though he was pleading. I was sitting in the audience and I heard that and I knew exactly what he was talking about. And I was very convinced at the time we have a country, a wonderful country that's a great data collectors. And gather all this data, shove it somewhere, and never do anything with it. So I decided I'm going to go on the internet. And once I got some internet going, I'm going to go on the internet and I'm going to see if I can find something that will validate what Grandfather Wallace Black Oak had to say. It took me 10 minutes. Walking 10 minutes. Yep. American Journal of Clinical Nutrition states that 79% of our Native American people cannot digest milk. <coughs> My next question would be, why isn't that information sent out to every single reservation? Why isn't that information sent to every health practitioner that is struggling to treat our very ill? Aha, I heard it. American Dairy Association, have a, you know, that's very interesting. In order for our schools to be federally subsidized for their school lunch program, do you realize that we have to offer cow's milk to every child? It's just the way it is. And then there's the WIG program, and I noticed in the WIG program, lots of milk to give away. If you want goat's milk, however, which, by the way, my family could tolerate, can't get that to the wick. So I really feel our most needy are being targeted. They're being served up freely, all the things that helps to perpetuate uh, their ill health. So we need to take a look at some of those programs, and I think we need to scream a little bit. I've got one voice. And I've screamed a lot about a lot of little things and tried to change it for everyone, but I need help now. And I need a lot of help. You know those little scratchy, scenty things you get in magazines? I opened up magazines and... I had one child, and one of my daughters picked up some of the mail and came in the house, Mom, man, seizure. Here we go again. She got hurt pretty badly that time when she hit the floor. She had a few pieces of furniture going down. So what did I do? Now I'm telling these things make people sick. Nobody wanted to hear that. And I was like, There's something wrong with that girl? What's wrong with her? Nothing. Things like that don't make people sick. Chemicals don't hurt people. So what I did is I got on the phone and I called the magazine company and I complained. And they took a little note of it. Then I called my sister and she made the complaints for me from her phone number. Then I did this little campaign. I couldn't go inside your house, your house, your house, your house because I was so sensitive, I couldn't go into anyone's home. So I knocked on the door and they handed phones through the window. We didn't have those little portal jobs. They had a big wire to them. They handed them through the windows and I called the same company and could play again. And I just tried all these phone numbers and I get everything. <laughs> an area in New York, and I just worked and worked and worked hard. I wanted to save our children because I knew what it did. And nobody was hearing me. I knew what it was doing to our babies. I would watch them. And no one heard me. But now they do. I'm happy to say 
We've come far, you and me. And when I say to you with that drama there, that was a desperate situation we had at that time. And those are the crazy things we tried to do to save ourselves and you. So here we are. We're a whole lot wiser. We're a whole lot smarter. And we're waking up. And we've got these beautiful little star seeds that are coming in to a filthy planet. What have we done, really? Oh well, it's what we're going to do. It's what we're going to do. You and me, we're going to do that. We're going to wake ourselves up to that which we do. We're going to help our friends, our neighbors, our family start very small. Start with your family. Start with yourself. Heal yourselves first. All the ones out there really sick, milk aggravates the mucous membranes, causes fluids to form in the ears, throat, chest, lungs. You've got pneumonia, cut out the milk. You've got chronic bronchitis, cut out the milk. There's chronic ear infections again and 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 Somebody said, well, what do you do when you get a real bad earache, Star? I use mouthwash in my ear. I put a drop or two of the mouthwash in my ear and that knocks it out. If I have earwax in your ear, you stole softener. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> and now my father's ear specialist, a really great guy, he's doing the same thing and he recommends it to all his patients. <laughs> Doctors are catching on too. So know that these wonderful little things, find uh, alternatives that are relatively benign and get creative. Um, so that's the milk thing. We, it messes with the brain. I know of nothing in the environment that messes with the brain other than mold. Uh, as much as wheat. For those of you that have children that are dyslexic, uh, reversing letters, that's nothing more than gluten intolerance, wheat intolerance. There's a little difference between gluten intolerance and wheat intolerance. If you're the kind of guy out there mowing your lawn and you're getting really sick from mowing your lawn and, and the wife says, oh, Harry, stop, I'll finish it up for you. I know you have these allergies to grass. And he goes and he has a tuna sandwich while he's resting. He just ate more of it because that's what wheat is. Wheat is in the grass family. So for those of you who are sensitive to the grasses, know that you could very well have a problem with wheat as well. And wheat does it affect you in such strange little ways that you may not recognize that wheat is doing it. And we eat wheat every day, all day, in some form or another, never feel good and never know why. So please, 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 I urge you to consider that. And if you suspect you have a problem with wheat, eliminate it for four whole days. That won't kill you. You won't starve to death, as any sun dancer will tell you. <laughs> They'll tell you we can do it without drinking water for four days. We're out there dancing. We don't eat drink. So you could do without wheat for four days to clear it from your system. And then on the fifth day, just eat some. And if you fall on the floor, get itchy, irritable, cranky, can't think, your handwriting goes really screwy crazy. If you argumentative and you, you know, with your, your, your family, uh, you can't, I mean, the big thing is you can't think. You fumble around, this, the typo errors, you know, the B and D most common, it's all wheat. You got these children that can't stand their feet to be touched. Their feet itch and carry on and all that kind of stuff. And they take their shoes off in the morning and straighten their socks up and they put the shoes back on and take them off and put them up and miss the school bus. We 